Good morning. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter worship service with communion. We remind members if you have not completed a communion card to have on record for 2024, please do so. The cards are in the holders on the back of each pew. Please fill it in and drop it in the offering plate. Each member only needs to complete one communion card per year. If you are communing online with us, please call or email the church office so it can be noted in the records. If you use a blank offering envelope from the holder on the pew, please clearly complete your name and address on the front. Please take your bulletins home with you after the service to review the announcements and note upcoming events on your calendars. I'll cover a few announcements now. Please plan to be here on April 14th for a special musical presentation by the Upper Perkyoman High School A Choir during the 1030 worship service. Over 700 oyster pies have been ordered and no additional orders are being taken. Pickup is this Saturday, April 13th from 9 a.m. to noon in the lower level of the chapel. Help is needed to prepare the oyster pies. See the dates and times in the bulletin. Help is still particularly needed Friday morning at 9 a.m. to peel and dice potatoes, Friday evening at 6 p.m. to make pie crust, and Saturday at 7 a.m. to assemble the pies. Please sign up today to help. The sign-up sheets are in the back of the church. If you offered to hard boil and peel eggs for the oyster pie sale, please remember to go to the chapel today to pick up your eggs. Note the annual meeting announcement, which will be held on Sunday, April 21st, within the 1030 service. Please plan to be here so we can meet the quorum requirement and complete the required business. The agenda is listed in the bulletin and includes voting on the acceptance of the 2023 annual report. The report is available through the eBlast on the website at huffschurch.com or limited printed copies of the annual report are available at the sanctuary exit or you can call the office to arrange a time to pick up a copy, one per household. In addition, we will hold nominations and elections to fill two positions on council. Anyone interested in serving on council, contact one of the members of the nominating committee listed in the bulletin. See the upcoming soup and sandwich sale information. Order forms are available on the table outside the sanctuary entrance. Orders and payment are due April 21st. Pickup is in the lower level of the chapel, 3.30 to 5 on May 2nd. Are there any other announcements that need to be noted at this time? Then we will begin our service and I invite you to stand as you are able for the ringing of the bell and responsive reading of the call to worship and invocation in your bulletins. Peace be with you. How good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. Receive the Holy Spirit. It is like precious oil on the head, the blessing of the Lord. Let us pray. Breathe in this place, O Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to open our minds, unlock our hearts, and enliven our faith, so that we may welcome the risen one among us. Amen. We will sing hymn number 148 in the green hardcover hymnal. This is a change that has been made. We will be singing hymn 128 as the last hymn. <laughs>
We'll affirm our faith by joining in the responsive reading of the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith printed in your bulletin. We believe in you, O God, eternal Spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. We'll continue with the children's message. The children are invited to sit in the front pew for a message with Tess and then return to sit with their families. All right, so uh, the children's message is usually for anybody that's sixth grade or less. Uh, I'm gonna have to see some ID, see if you're the right age. Do you have any? No? No ID? Oh, okay. Does anybody ever ask you for ID? Do you have any school IDs or anything like that? Yeah? Yeah, you have school IDs? No, okay. All right, well, you're still pretty young for needing ID, but as adults can attest to, we usually need ID lots of places that we go. Uh, if we go traveling, uh, maybe if we go somewhere and they give a senior citizen discount, we have to prove that we're a senior citizen. Uh, like if we go in to cash a check at a bank, they may ask for a proof of identity. Now, why do they need to see that? Why do they need to see like our driver's license? Why do you think they would ask us for that? Any ideas? Well, the answer is simple. They want proof of our identity. They need, the cashier needs to see that our face matches whatever's on our driver's license. Uh, they can't give the money to the wrong person, right? So they need to be sure that we really are who we claim to be. So there may be some times in the future when you will be asked for identification. You may need a picture ID to get a library card you might even need a picture ID to sign up for a youth sports team. Many schools now require students and teachers to wear a picture ID at church, at school, sorry. Almost every day we, as adults, are asked to prove that we are who we say we are. Well, what does this have to do with uh, church? So today we're talking about something that happened in the scripture of John, uh, the 20th chapter. 
And you may have heard this story before. I'm going to bet that you probably did. But on the Sunday that Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to a group of his disciples. One of the disciples, anyone remember who this might, not, might have been who wasn't with them at the time? The disciples were gathered in this room, and the room was locked, but there was one of them missing. Anybody remember who it is that was missing? Thomas, right. So when the disciples told Thomas that they had seen Jesus and that he was alive, Thomas said, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. I want to see the nail prints in his hands and put my hand in the place where the spear was thrust into his side. Now, a week later, Jesus appeared to his disciples again. This time, Thomas was there. And Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And then, do you think Thomas believed then when he actually saw him? Yeah, he did. Um, but then Jesus said, blessed are those who believe even though they don't see me. So a lot of people today won't believe that Jesus really rose from the grave because they haven't seen him with their own eyes. We weren't there living at that time, were we? So they want proof of identity before they will believe. Uh, and Jesus said, blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. How about you? Do you need to have proof of identity before you will believe in Jesus? Or will you accept him by your faith? Those are some things that you have to think about in the, in the coming days. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sin. Help us to accept by faith that Jesus has risen from the grave and that he is alive. Amen. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his, his blessing, life forevermore. <laughs>
let us pray together for God's blessing on all our offerings. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and life and love, and above all, the presence of the living Lord among us. By your Spirit, who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. As a framework for looking at the resurrection story today, I am asking four questions. What does the text say is happening? What are the underlying emotions in the text? What is Jesus calling the disciples to become and do? And finally, what does this mean for us today? What does the text say is happening? The passage has two episodes. The first takes place on the evening of the Easter event, and the second a week later. We begin with the first episode. Disoriented and fearful, the disciples are gathered behind closed, locked doors. Despite the locked doors, the risen Jesus is then standing among them. He comes as a wounded healer. He shows them the marks on his hands and his side. Now this is a witness that Jesus had in fact been crucified and had died. Some in the early church or in the early time of the church would say, well maybe Jesus didn't actually die on the cross or there was a substitute or something. This is saying, no, this is actually Jesus. He was actually crucified. There are the marks. There is no army of angels with Jesus. The risen Jesus comes to them in peace and shares his peace with them. This is a peace of vulnerability, compassion, and love. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them and commissions them as apostles for mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
The risen Jesus calls and sends them into mission. The second episode shows that a week later, the disciples are still disoriented, still filled with doubt and fear. We talk about doubting Thomas, or tardy Thomas, but all of the disciples are still filled with doubt. The doors are still locked shut. Their hearts have not yet opened to the gift of the Holy Spirit. They dare not engage in public mission. The risen Jesus comes again through locked doors, shows his wounds, offers again the peace of vulnerability, compassion, and love, calls Thomas, calls each disciple, calls each one of us, do not doubt, but believe. What are the underlying emotions that the disciples are feeling? What the disciples experience is disorientation. It can take any one of us a while to fully wrap our hearts and minds around sudden, jarring change. They've gone through a traumatic experience. On Thursday, Jesus was arrested. On Friday, he was crucified, died, and was buried. The disciples are overwhelmed and in shock. They are hiding in great fear. Then on Sunday morning, the report is that the tomb is empty. Soon after this, Mary Magdalene cheers, I have seen the Lord. How can that be possible? The risen Jesus appears to them, blesses them with peace, breathes the Holy Spirit upon them, this encounter with the risen Jesus leaves them speechless and in awe. Just imagine what it would be like to experience that. But there's more. Having received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the risen Jesus calls them and sends them to go out into mission. This would be the exact same mission that Jesus had just been crucified for, proclaiming, now they are really afraid. Still, they do tentatively begin their mission mandate. They tell Thomas, who wasn't there, we have seen the Lord. Thomas refuses to believe them, as they had refused to believe Mary. With that shaky start, how are things going to go when they engage people outside the circle of Jesus' disciples? Of course the disciples are disoriented. They are trying to comprehend what it means that Jesus Christ is risen. Of course they are filled with fear and doubt, hiding behind locked doors. What dangerous endeavor is the risen one now sending them on, sharing the exact same mission that led to the cross? A week later, through the locked door, the risen Jesus again appears, gives blessings of peace, and addresses their doubts. This passage reminds us that the risen Jesus comes to us in peace and compassion again and again throughout our lives, through our fear, through our doubt, through our disorientation. The risen Jesus comes to us. Jesus is with us in our confusion and in our vulnerability. Jesus is with us when everything seems to be falling apart, Jesus is with us when we are most in need. Jesus' peace and presence keeps us from utter despair. 
What is Jesus calling the disciples to become and do? Those who have received Jesus' peace and the gift of the Holy Spirit are to reorient themselves, live into sharing God's mission, a mission the risen one calls them to, and the Holy Spirit will empower and guide them on. They are to leave their relatively safe space and move boldly forward in faith. They are to share Jesus' peace and to forgive sins. With an outward mindset, they are to share the good news, to build Jesus' communities of new disciples, and to live into the resurrection reality of hope and courage. This will mean being vulnerable to others as Jesus was vulnerable. This will mean being wounded as Jesus was wounded. This will mean sharing a way of life that centers love and compassion, a way of life that is inclusive and kind. There will be great personal risk. There will be great deep spiritual resiliency. What does this mean to us today? The great temptation of the church is to stay behind closed doors, to have an inward orientation within ourselves toward each other inside, rather than an outward mindset. The passage is calling us to move out of our safe spaces and to be brave. This is a call not just for a few, but for everyone who is blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism. When we are willing to move outward in mission, even when we are going to places that scare us, we reaffirm our baptismal commitment. And the Holy Spirit is with us to guide us. Yes, Jesus, sharing Jesus' mission of love, compassion, forgiveness, and kindness can be scary. To be vulnerable like the risen one, showing our wounds, sharing his peace, is both risky and rewarding. We are called to move beyond closed doors with hearts open in love, minds open with compassion, and hands open with kindness. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us stand as we are able. 136, Christ is risen.
be in a time of prayer. As we join in prayer today, we hold in our prayers those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for Jessica, Richard, Stephen, Catherine, myself, and others. We ask that God's healing power might be poured upon each of these people, and that God might bring each to God's wholeness and healing power. We pray for those who have passed away, for the family and friends of William Reinhardt. We also lift in our prayers our loved ones whom God has embraced into God's everlasting love. On this second Sunday of Easter, we celebrate the resurrection, and we are thankful that God has embraced our loved ones who have died into God's everlasting love and life. We hold Judy in our prayers who has gone missing, and we ask that the efforts to find her are successful. We pray for the members of this congregation. We especially lift in our prayers this morning the compromise who are in the middle of a process of discerning their faith, of deepening their discipleship journey, and are learning about the faith as followers of Jesus Christ, and also for their mentors. We ask that you might guide the confirmation class, confirmands and mentors, as they gather together and move forward in faith. May they deepen in their faith, and may their faith be with them for all the days of their lives. We lift in our prayers this morning our music ministry. We thank you for blessing us with people who are gifted with the gifts of music, who are able to help us to pray in different ways through music. We are blessed with their presence and we give our thanks for them. These prayers and the prayers of our hearts, we lift up to you, dear God, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Let us join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise and bless you for your creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessings. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, to accept the pain of death at the hands of those 
whom Jesus loved. We rejoice in a perfect victory over the grave. You have raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life with the faithful in every place and time. We praise with joy your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. O God most high. We remember on the night of betrayal and desertion and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, for it broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death rejoicing in Christ's resurrection and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to your service on behalf of all people. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives that we may know you as the Holy One, who is with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. The bread in which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. Amen.
body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Amen. cup of salvation poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us join together in the discipleship pledge. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbors as ourselves. We love one another as Jesus loves us. We make disciples by teaching and modeling how to follow Jesus' way of love. This is the blessing of the Lord, life forevermore. Hallelujah. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks Hymn 128, Christ the Lord is risen today. Peace.